Hey everyone, about a month ago, we had a video where we started hiding things in SharePoint. And to do that, we used configuration settings and we did a little bit of JSON. We did some low code development. Today, I wanted to do what we're gonna call pro code, but don't worry, this isn't difficult. We're gonna make this super easy. We're gonna create a SharePoint framework extension that starts hiding things in SharePoint. So let's get into it. Before we get started, this is my disclaimer. This is for learning purposes. If you do this in your production environment, please be very careful. All right, so let's get started. Today, we're gonna do some SPFX, some SharePoint framework. If you've never worked with SPFX or SharePoint framework, you can follow the instructions right here to set up your development environment. It goes through installing node.js, installing a code editor, which I use Microsoft Visual Studio Code. It's free. All of this is free. There's other tools that you can follow to set up, uh, Gulp, Yoman. So you can set all of that up. Now, just to get you up to speed on where we are today, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check my version to make sure it matches. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my SharePoint generator, my SharePoint framework version. This command checks my version. I am currently on 1.20, which was at the top of the list of where we were before. Next, we're gonna do node version. I'm just gonna double check my node version. I'm at version 18.20.5. So check out the documentation right here, version 18. So I'm looking pretty good today. This is where I wanna be. I'm not gonna do TypeScript and today I'm not even gonna do React. We're just gonna keep this very simple. And one more thing you may wanna check on is your Yo version. So just Yo version. We can check out what version of Yoman I'm currently running. And I'm on 5.1.0. That's where I am today. So today, what I'm going to do is we're going to start up a SharePoint framework extension project. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I have a folder in my C drive and it is called Yo. So I have a folder here. It has some more folders in it. This is where I store my projects. I'm gonna create a new folder called MDUI Hider. We'll just call it that. So I created a new folder and this time I'm gonna navigate there. So CD UI Hider. So we can see in my navigation, that's where I am currently located. And this is where I'm going to create my project. So right here in my C drive in a folder called Yo, I've created a new folder called UI Hider and there's no documents in there yet, but now we're gonna create this package. So let's create this package in here with yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint. And this is going to create this big package of everything we need for SharePoint framework. And it's gonna start creating it in this folder. So we can see now it's looking for the name of our project. I'm just gonna call it example, let's see, example UI hider. And for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an extension because I want this to run on my entire site collection. I'm gonna add it as an app. So I'm gonna choose extension. It's not a web part. It's not a library in SharePoint and it's not an adaptive card. It's an extension to our SharePoint sites. And for this one, we're gonna choose application customizer because I want it to work across the entire site. It's not a field, right? We're not working with fields, lists or forms. It's application customizer. And what is our application customizer gonna be called? We'll call it UI Hider. And so now it started creating all those files. So we can see right here, now we have all these files in here. Visual Studio Code, Config, SharePoint, SRC, our source file. And these are all the files that it's starting to create. And so it's gonna run that and create this giant package in our files right now. And we'll just wait for my computer, it takes two to three minutes to create this package. All right, so we have created a nice package. It's now stored on our hard drive. What I'm gonna do is run the command. I'm gonna run the command code dot, and this is gonna open up Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is now running. Hopefully I can zoom in, there we go. And inside here, I'm gonna go to SRC, source, extensions, and what I'm gonna look at is the UI hider, application customizer, TypeScript. And we can see all of this is out of the box. This is with our current version that we're running. This is what we have. This is where we're gonna start editing. 
Now, before I do anything, before I start customizing, I really want this to work with my dev environment. So I have my own Microsoft 365 dev environment. I'm going to go to config up here, serve.json, and I'm going to change the page URLs here. And this is where I'm going to do my testing. And once again, I'm just saying this is how I do it. If you do it a different way, feel free to share it. I don't mind. This is how I do it. So I'm going to take my SharePoint site, the one that I want to develop in. So this is my development environment. I have an entire Microsoft 365 tenant to develop things in. I'm going to take the URL. So let's see my URL up here. I'm going to take this entire URL and I'm going to replace the page URL. The page URL. And then I'm going to hit save all. So I'm just going to save everything. And up here in the top, let's make sure we can see everything. Up here in the top, we can see I have terminal. I'm going to click new terminal. And in new terminal, I'm going to write gulp build. And I'm going to let it build out that extension. So it's going to build out my all of my settings that I've created so far. And it's pretty much just out of the box. And I'm going to say gulp serve. And this is actually going to open up Microsoft Edge for me. So it's going to open up Microsoft Edge. I'm going to say load debug scripts. I'm going to say that's fine. And we can see here that this is the out of the box right now. The code that came out of the box with our extension. And it ran a, an alert hello from the UI application customizer test message. So let's look at our code. So let's go back to our code here. And you can see here, dialogue alert. Hello from whomever test message. So we can write whatever we want in here. We, hello from Andrew Hess. This is in my pop-up. And then we click file, save all. And then I give a refresh here. So I give a refresh to my browser. Hello from Andrew Hess. This is in my pop-up. So this is all working. It's good to test this before you keep going further. Can you get the out of the box functionality to work? Now let's get into our own custom code. All right, so we can see here, we're using this right here, this.properties test message. I wanna remove that. So in my serve.json, I'm actually gonna remove these properties. I'm going to remove these properties because I'm not using them. That was my test message. I'm going to click file, save. I'm going to go to my application customizer right here. This is where I want to start editing. And I'm going to inject my own CSS in here that is going to start hiding things in SharePoint. So right here, instead of the alert, place it with my own code. And if we zoom in there, you can see like, this is like the uh, the tilde button up there. That's kind of small. It's like a double quotes, but like a not single quotes. It's the tilde. And we can see I'm going to hide the sweep bar. So I'm, I'm actually just going to remove this comment in here, right here, just to kind of for clarity. What we're doing is we're, we're identifying the sweep bar, the sweet nav bar. And now we need to do one more important th part. And that is to actually enact this or enable it on our page. So now what we're going to say is right before the return, we're going to say document dot head dot append child in line style right there. And we need a semicolon and we're going to click file, save all, and we are going to gulp serve. Let that run again. I'm going to say load debug scripts. And this time, and this time with a refresh, I pressed F5 to refresh. You can see our nav bar is now gone. You might have to refresh because things sometimes get stored in cache. So just to kind of be clear about that, sometimes what you can do is to exit out of your script. I press control C and that exits out of my script. Then there's other things you can do. You can do gulp clean. This kind of cleans that out to rebuild the project if things get stuck in cache. Then gulp build. So you can rebuild it. And then finally, just to kind of make sure that's all working, gulp serve.
and it'll run. And for me, it will open up Microsoft Edge and run again. And that shows my new development environment. We've now hidden the nav bar. So now let's kind of start hiding other places. And you could probably go to Copilot or ChatGPT and start finding names of parts that you want to hide. But there's a better way to do this. And what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edge right here, the three dots. I'm going to go to more tools, developer tools. There's other ways to get in here, right? You can press control shift I. Another option is to right click and click inspect. So we can inspect where we are. So we have elements. And then the next thing, if we could, if things could get a little bigger right here is select an element on the page to inspect. So we can click on this. So let's find another spot we want to hide. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Like we're just learning here. Now, now you notice right here, I'll click here. This one is called main header 108. So this is right, the div main header 108. This is what we're gonna hide next. So let's go to our code. Next, what we're gonna hide is the, and so we're gonna add it right here. Right here, we're gonna hide div Dot, what was that? Was that main header? Let's look at that again. Main header 108. We're going to hide div main header 108 display none and then override it with important. Make sure it's important. And then just kind of fix our indentation. Make sure everything looks good. Click file save all. It's still running the gulp build. So we'll go back and I, I believe we, we did this whole main header. Now I'm going to hit refresh. I'm, you can, you know, you can click right click refresh if you want or F5. Boom. Main header is completely gone, but it's kind of neat how you can find things and you can start hiding them. But notice that flash. This is also a flash. Like it's there for half a second. This is not completely perfect. This is just, we're just learning here how to hide things. So let's say we wanted to hide this bar right here. So let's inspect here. Notice it right here, div ID SP app bar. Let's do the same thing. So now we're gonna do div dot SP app bar. And then we just want the display none important. Put it in there, file, save all. Go back to our dev environment. We hid this bar on the left side over here. We're gonna hit refresh. I'm gonna hit F5 this time. F5 refresh, boom, that bar is gone. Notice that, so this is the pro code way to do these things. And I think this is very valuable, not for just hiding things, but just manipulating things. You can replace things with different logos. You can replace things with different words or different text or your own images. You know, this is not perfect. This is not perfect because our extension is hiding things after the page has already started rendering. But one thing that will start happening is this will start saving in cache and people won't notice it. Like it's just a split second. It's there and then it's not there. So this is the downside of doing this. This is probably why Microsoft recommends you not to do this, but there's a split second, it's not there. And I've been requested to remove or hide things and this is how I do it. So the CSS is not applied instantly, not before the page loads. And if you know how to do it before the page loads, feel free to leave it in there. But I just wanted to keep this simple. I wanted to keep this as simple as I could, this demonstration. So this is how I hide everything in the page. And now I can come in here, I can edit the page, I can remove web parts I don't wanna see. And maybe Microsoft does not want me showing you how to do this. And the reason is, is Microsoft makes changes. Microsoft may make a change and your code may not work and you may have to recreate your code, rewrite your code and fix it when Microsoft renames things. So we'll just refresh. Now our SharePoint website is looking 
nice and beautiful. We are editing the SharePoint site after it's rendered. Microsoft may rename something. May they may rename, so if we come in here, Microsoft may rename main header 108 to 109. That could happen and this would break your code. So just be aware of this. This is for learning purposes. Let's get into it and let's inject this into our actual SharePoint site. So the next thing that I wanna do is I'm ready to use this code. I'm gonna press Control C to stop. So I'm now stopping everything. I'm, the server stopped. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say gulp bundle ship. I'm keeping this very, very simple. There's maybe other ways that you've learned and all the pro code dev, dev people in here. There's maybe different things that you've learned. I'm just keeping this as simple as possible to teach how to do these things. This is the first building block. So that's all we're doing is we're starting very simple. Then gulp package solution dash dash ship. Let me make sure um, we can all see that. You see that gulp package solution dash dash ship. And now we're gonna build out that package. So we're building out that package. You wanna be very careful doing this as anything production. Please learn what you're doing before, don't come to me if I break your SharePoint, okay? Please be very careful with what you're doing. This is pro code. Now we have our file in here, SharePoint solution. Right here is our example UI hider s.sppkg. This is the file we want. You are going to go to your SharePoint app catalog, and this is where you're going to upload this. Now there's different ways that you can deploy this solution. Of course, you can make this solution available across all sites. Don't do this. Make sure this is not checked. Just deploy. We're gonna deploy this separately ourselves. Deploy, do not check that checkbox. All right, so now we wanna make sure that there's no errors. So we can see down here, there's a column here deployed added to all sites are there errors so double check all that and we if we move me let me move me there's no errors you can see here in the bottom right no errors it's not added to all sites and it's deployed it's looking good now let's go to my actual sharepoint all right so now we're in my actual sharepoint site you can see my url up here we're in the actual sharepoint site what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the gear icon add an app and you will see my example UI hider. It will be right here. This is my client side solution. I'm going to click add and it's going to add it to this site collection. It's adding, this may take some time. I'm not sure how much time it takes. We're gonna go back to the top level SharePoint site, refresh. It's now added to my site collection. No matter which site I'm on in my site collection, you can see that that CSS has now been applied. It is now hidden. Now the next trick, the next trick, you're stuck. How do you remove it? You can't undo it. You come to your site contents. If you cannot find site contents, find the URL of another site, come to layout slash 15, view list, view equals 14, find that URL, find that URL. Then come to the three dots, remove it. Return to classic SharePoint. Right now in 2025, this only works in classic SharePoint. So I'm gonna to come to the three dots. This may change. Remove it, click OK. It's gonna take a little bit of time to remove it, but you're not done yet. Do not finish here. We wanna continue after this. It is removed. Next, go to Recycle Bin. Next, come to the Recycle Bin, delete it but you're still not done yet. We need to go back, exit the classic experience, and down here at the very bottom, second stage recycle bin. Delete it from your second stage recycle bin. Just be careful with what you're doing here. Now, if we come back to home, our navigation bar appears. It's all working, perfect again. This was an example. This is a learning opportunity. That's what we're doing here, we're learning. I'm not saying do this in your production. Be very careful. We are learning how to inject CSS into a SharePoint site. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. Hopefully this is helpful.
please like and subscribe and we'll get into it some more.